Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, we're on our study group uh, mission uh, to finish this book. You'll see it when you believe it by Dr. Wayne Dyer. We are on the final chapter of chapter seven, forgiveness. Okay, to forgive you must have blamed. Achieving an awakened life is virtually impossible until we put the universal principle of forgiveness to work in our daily lives. I include a chapter on forgiveness because I know that an, an inability to forgive truly is the cause of many, many people's suffering. In working with thousands of individuals over the years, I have come to the conclusion that an absence of forgiveness is tantamount to staying imprisoned in an, an unawakened life. It is as important to learn and practice as are all of the other principles. We cannot become awakened and truly live an enlightened life as long as we believe that we are restricted to form. As we have seen, enlightenment and abundance go hand in hand. For an awakened life, we must transcend our bodies. We must learn to be detached and to tune ourselves more finely to the synchronicity of the universe. But if we have not learned forgiveness, we may master all of the other principles and still remain prisoners. To genuinely feel forgiveness is to understand and apply all that you have read in this book. Forgiveness is the ultimate test for the person who is willing and able to live the enlightened life. In the introduction, in the introduction to this book, I include a story about visiting my father's grave in 1974. That story is a story of forgiveness. And that act was, without question, the catalyst for moving me into a new life of abundance and love. It was the most freeing and loving thing I had ever done. Once I rid myself of the hatred and anger that I have been storing inside of myself for this man, whom I did not even know, I had inner space to be receptive to an entirely new way of living and perceiving my world. That new world view, devoid of judgment and hatred, became the turning point of my life. If you want to walk the path of higher consciousness, then you must take a hard look at your own willingness to forgive. Most of us simply are not very good at it. Most of us hang on to our judgments and hatreds. Most of us are very good at blaming others for the shortcomings of our lives. Forgiveness, I mean true 100% forgiveness, involves a dramatic shift. Here we go again, back to the very stuff of the universe and the very stuff of our existence. Thought. Not to forgive is not to understand how the universe works and how you fit into it. The universe does not forgive because it does not blame. Life is a series of events which we have created and attracted to ourselves. The universe is also a series of events, all of which occur independently of our opinions about them. It all just is, and it is perfect. The stars are all in their proper places. Each snowflake that falls lands exactly where it is supposed to. The temperature each day is just what it is supposed to be. In fact, even the assignment of a number on a thermometer is a kind of judgment about, about it when you think about it. The storms, the floods, the droughts, the position of the rivers and mountains, the orbit of the planets, all of it just is. The universe with all of its perfection is presented to us. There is nothing to forgive because there is nothing to judge and no one to blame. When we know we create all that we need for our existence, then we are in a position to know that we created all the hatred and anger we have towards others. We even have created the blame. Let's re-repeat that <laughs> correctly. We even have created the others in our lives for the purpose of having someone to blame. Our need to forgive is a monumental misperception. 
The belief that others should not have treated us the way that they did is, of course, the ultimate absurdity. The universe is always working just the way it is supposed to, and so is everything in it, even the things that we have judged to be wrong, improper, cruel, and painful, and painful for us and others. Our desire to improve those things is also a part of the perfect universe. How can others not have treated us the way they did? Instead of being angry at the way we were treated, regardless of how horrible we have assessed it to be, we need to learn to view that treatment from another perspective. They did what they knew how to do, given the conditions of their lives. The rest of the stuff that we carry around with us is ours. We own it all. If it is hatred and judgment, then that is what we have elected to carry around with us. And that is what we will have to give away to others. You have literally given control of your life to those who have judged to have wronged you. To those whom you have judged to have wronged you. Okay, we will reread re re that part. You have literally given control of your life to those whom you have judged to have wronged you. Learning to forgive involves learning to correct the mis misperceptions that you have created with your own thoughts. Once you have your thoughts clear, you will assume total responsibility for yourself, including how you are treated, and you will get yourself to the point where forgiveness is no longer something that you must practice. You will have corrected all of your misperceptions and eliminated the three sources of your discontent which create the need to forgive in the first place. Understanding these thought distortions will lead to practising forgiveness and ultimately to freedom from ever having to forgive. Ridding yourself of blame, revenge, judgment. I believe that my, my arriving at this place in my life has to do with having rid myself for the most part of these three big destructive practices. As long as I had a trace of them in my life, the forgiveness principle got entangled with them and I was unable to live naturally and unimpeded. Now that I live without them, forgiveness simply never comes up for me, <clears throat> except as something that I share with others who are suffering so much because of their desire to hang on to those ways of thinking. As long as we continue to think in these ways, we have to work at forgiveness. When we transcend this kind of thought, forgiveness is no longer an issue. Blame. If we are unable to forgive those we perceive as having wronged us at some time in the past, we need to look at the decision to blame them for our unhappiness. Blame runs rampant in our culture and very likely it runs just as out of control in your life. The lawsuit explosion is testimony to the unwillingness of most people to take responsibility for their own lives. Instead, they sue as many people as possible, disregarding personal negligence and ultimately making someone else pay for a misfortune. Advertisements offering legal assistance proclaim it's not your fault regardless of the circumstances. You should think about suing for damages now. This mindset of assigning responsibility to others for our life circumstances and misfortunes is the product of an attitude of blame. The more you have exercised it in your life, the more likely you will find forgiveness difficult to practice. You must be completely honest with yourself if you are ever to rid yourself entirely of blame. The way to begin is to take total responsibility for everything that you are in your life right now. That's right. Say to yourself, I am the sum total of my choices up until this moment. Your enculturation, enculturation may take this a difficult, per okay, let's just uh, get this word out. Your enculturation may make this a difficult precept for you to accept. You may want to say, I couldn't help it, or it was someone else's fault, 
or I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, or I was done a dirty deal, or family circumstances created my miser misery, or whatever other excuse you have developed to absolve yourself of responsibility. Discard all of that and look at your life from a different perspective. Everything that happened to you is a lesson you can be grateful for. Everyone who came into your life was a teacher, regardless of how much you choose to hate and blame him or her. There truly are no accidents. This universe is working perfectly, including all of the subatomic particles that make you up and those you blame. It is all just as it is supposed to be. Nothing more, nothing less. All of those situations including when you were a small child, contain immensely valuable lessons for you to absorb and benefit from. Lessons which are blocked by feelings of hate and blame. Assess how much you resist this principle of taking total responsibility for your life and believing that there truly are no accidents in this perfect universe. Follow this logic. Someone has harmed you in some way in your past. You feel hurt and angry, and that anger and that anger ultimately turns to hatred. This is your hatred. You carry it around with you wherever you go. You own it. It is you and you are it. The hatred is all thought and is with you wherever you go. You have given someone permission not only to hurt you once, but to continue controlling your inner life. The hatred infects your life while the other person is still on his or her path doing exactly what he or she knows how to do, independent of your current miserable state. The absurdity of blame is that it gives other people control over us at the moment of their distardily deed. Dastardly deed and continues to give them control over how we interact with others. We become prisoners without hope of achieving a higher sense of awakening and happiness for ourselves. This is how blame works in us and why it is futile and destructive activity. As long as we blame others for the way we feel today, we will have to wait for them to change before we can grow out of our current immobilized state Forgiveness is a tool to use to transcend the negative effects of blame. Once we have forgiven another, we no longer need to blame him. When we have forgiven for all, forgiveness for all, we no longer we will know okay, when we have forgiveness for all, there will be no one left to blame for anything. Ironically, then we also will have no need to forgive any more. And that is the real lesson of this chapter. Forgiveness means changing your misperceptions. When we forgive another for anything that he or she may have done to us, we're really saying, I no longer give you the power to control who I am, how I think and how I'll behave in the future. I take responsibility for all of that now. Thus, we really have nothing to forgive since we create our own reality by how we choose to process the behaviour of others. We processed it in a way that hurt us when we chose blame. We might have chosen not to have hatred within ourselves and simply let it go. Once we change our perceptions of life's hurts and pains and see that we create all that we need for this dream, including the scoundrels, we no longer need to blame anyone for anything. This is the most freeing stage to reach that you can imagine. Being totally free from blame and taking complete responsibility for life requires a great deal of discipline. It is a discipline of self-love rather than self-contempt. When we love ourselves, we refuse to allow others to manage our emotions from afar. Forgiveness is our means to that end. When we choose this option, it eventually becomes an automatic reaction towards those who treat us contempt contemptuously, and then of course, forgiveness is no longer required. Forgiveness is an act of self-love, rather than some 
altruistic san san saintly behaviour. Altruistic Altru saintly behaviour. It gives us control over our inner life and thoughts. Knowing that nothing is random and that all of life is purposeful, even people who seem so destructively different from us, allows us to accept those accidents and those scoundrels as events with some meaning for us. I can assure you that once you no longer need the lessons in your life that unpleasant events offer you, you will no longer have these events. If forgiveness is something you need to practice, you will continue to attract opportunities to practice it. If your reaction is anger and hatred and defiance, then those kinds of people and weird unlucky breaks will continue to be in your life. I rarely run into these things in my life anymore. I look for the good in everyone and I take responsibility for all that comes my way and I mean all of it. Consequently, I see what I believe over and over again. You too are seeing what you believe and if you are blaming and full of hate, that is what you believe and of course, that is what you see as well. Revenge. We live in a world which endorses anger and revenge. It is a world It is a world whose people are almost always at war in one way or another. War is our extreme tool for handling disagreement. War is waged between nations by those within the nations who are not at peace with themselves. Wars are waged even as an attempt to solve human problems. Wars on poverty, drugs, illiteracy and hunger. We pray to those who endorse forgiveness. We claim to love and respect great spiritual masters and their teachings. But when it comes to enacting forgiveness, we opt for revenge and war. Gunfire in Bethlehem on Christmas Day and in Jerusalem on Easter Sunday are sad reminders that forgiveness often is something that we pay lip service to while crucifying designated enemies. Revenge is the acting out of the thoughts of blame. Blame is in the mind and revenge is acted out in form. The acting out part immobilises those who choose revenge as a lifestyle and violates the most sacred sacrament available to us. Thou shalt not kill. Yet kill we do, in numbers too large to comprehend, and we are building weapons so massive in their destructive ability that entire cities can be rendered into ashes along with all of their inhabitants. While this is all part of the perfect way of things that is so paradoxical, so too is the desire to end it, that peace loving people feel within their hearts. So as this violence continues and intensifies, we must ask ourselves, we all must ask ourselves, what is the lesson that we are as a total body of humanity are struggling to learn in this situation? The existence of ourselves and future generations depends on our finding that answer. Every day we hear of people who have been wronged somehow, injured, killed, maimed, raped and robbed, and all and of the desire to exact revenge on the, perpetra on the perpetrators. Families of victims are filled with anger and motivated by revenge. Hate flourishes, along with demands for punishment similar to the pain inflicted on their loved ones. Yet even when that penalty is carried out, the victimised continue to feel pain, suffering and hatred. They poison their souls with debilitating anger and cannot continue their lives free of this unwanted pain. They are victimised not only by the criminal, but by their need to exact their revenge. I remember a case that Earl Nightingale told me about. It rarely impressed upon me the importance of forgiveness. A woman lost her only daughter to a violent criminal act. For the next 18 years, the woman was consumed by the desire for revenge, which remained unfulfilled, she believed only because the death penalty had subsequently been banned in the state 
where the murderer had received his death sentence. For 18 years, the mother was unable to function in a satisfying way, the way she once wanted to. Throughout the years, she sought help for her unhappiness from a variety of sources. It was ultimately the act of forgiveness that freed her. When she visited and forgave her daughter's murderer, still on death row 18 years later, she described it as a spiritual experience of love for herself, her daughter and the murderer. Blaming others for the conditions of your life fuels anger. There are many everyday folks and professionals who endorse anger as a healthy response to the world. To the degree that anger is one of many feelings, thoughts, that we as human beings are capable of, I concur. It would seem as unlikely for us never to have anger as for the sky never to have clouds. The problem occurs when we hang on to it deliberately or helplessly and find that we have blame, revenge and judgment which we are unable or unwilling to let go of. I do not approve of hitting children to teach them not to hit others or believe that the expression of anger is always therapeutic, nor do I believe in blaming others for my emotional state. I recommend being gentle with yourself and loving yourself regardless of how others respond in the universe. Try not being attached to any belief that others should not be what they are and instead understand that they are on their own path and that your opinion about them has nothing to do with how they behave. Will yourself with love, even towards those who would do you harm, which is what all spiritual leaders have said, and see if you still have anger and revenge. This is difficult only if you are attached to having the world be other than the way it is. If you can accept even that which you want not to be and send love where you previously sent hatred, you will not need to have anger thoughts, angry thoughts anymore. You will not need to get even. Instead, you will find yourself unable to hang on to anger or to immobilise yourself with those thoughts. When you teach yourself to be the thoughts that are harmonious rather than those that are discordant and divisive, you will find anger an option. You no longer elect. Once you stop the blaming and take responsibility for all of your inner world, the anger dissipates as well. When you finally send away anger completely, you will no longer have your life distorted by the need for revenge. You will not opt to turn control of your life over to those who you perceive have wronged you. You will find a sense of peace through your act of forgiveness and you will remain on the path of enlightenment. If enough individuals integrate forgiveness consciousness into their lives, perhaps we will one day make this our policy towards other nations as well. Young people are dying today to avenge their ancestors. They are fighting in the Holy Land, where Jesus walked preaching forgiveness. They wage war, interminably. What does it prove? Where does it lead? To peace? Never. The vanquished respond with vengeance and, and increase the human toll in battles over ancient enmities. It can all begin to change with you. If you learn the universal principle of forgiveness, learn to transcend hatred as a response to hatred and to give away peace in its place. It is not weak to forgive. It is a gallant and brave act. Fighting weakness, everyone who participates. Everything that you are against weakens you in some way. As Paul beseeched us in Romans 12.21 Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You simply need to forgive and never let yourself behave in ways which you despise yourself. An ancient Chinese proverb tells us The one who pursues revenge should dig two graves. Judgment Blame you can eliminate. Revenge you can send out of your life. 
but the best you can do with judgment is to reduce the amount of it in your daily life. Judgment means to view the world as you are, rather than as it is. It is impossible to avoid judgment completely because virtually every thought has some judgment in it. To tell yourself that this is a beautiful day is a judgment. To send someone love is a judgment. To evaluate anyone or anything is a judgment. Thus, you can only avoid judgment when you avoid thinking altogether, and that would be absurd. But you can significantly reduce the amount of negative judging that you do. And this is a kind of forgiveness that will help to improve the quality of your life dramatically. The first thing to remember about judgments is that they do not alter anything or anyone in the universe. Just because you dislike someone or react negatively towards some behaviour does not change the person or behaviour you are judging. I remind you again to keep in mind that when you judge another, you do not define that person. You define yourself. Your judgments only say something about you. They describe your likes and dislikes. They do not define the person being judged. That person is defined by his or her own thoughts and actions. Once you recognise this, you begin replacing your inclination to judge with acceptance. And this is forgiveness in action. When you accept others, you no longer experience the hurt that goes with judging them. When someone acts in a way you find disagreeable, understand that your hurt, anger, fear, or any strong emotion is how you have chosen to process that person's behaviour. If you are unable or unwilling to notice that emotion and subsequently let go of it, then it is yourself that is in need of attention. That person's behaviour has collided with something unfinished or unacknowledged in your life. Distress at the person's behaviour is your way of avoiding something inside of you. A fine distinction, a fine distinction perhaps, but a very significant one. Your thoughts about how others are behaving are yours. You own them. You carry around the results of those thoughts. If you do not judge those around you, but instead accept them for precisely where they are on their own path, eliminating your need to be upset by them, you have put forgiveness into practice. Forgiveness is really just correcting our own misperceptions. You really have nothing to forgive other than yourself for having judged or blamed in the first place. All three of these qualities, blame, revenge and judgment, are deeply ingrained thinking habits. They develop in a culture which prizes itself on blaming everyone else for everything that happens and suing endlessly to invoke, just, to invoke justice. They result from having thoughts of revenge drummed into your head when you were a child and justifying it all as only proper, patriotic or just. Yet all of this behaviour is extremely self-defeating and irresponsible, to say nothing of unenlightened. And it is very stupid to use a judgement. Whenever you find yourself caught in this style of behaviour, remind yourself that you are the ultimate victim here. You are allowing your entire life to be controlled by the behaviours of others, and no matter how much you may justify it, you are still a slave to the whims of others when you act this way. As Maslow reminded us, there is no such thing as a well-adjusted slave. Such behaviour also keeps you in an unawakened state. You cannot get to a sense of purpose and live a life of harmony and balance while simultaneously allowing someone else to dictate your thoughts and actions. You cannot let your purpose find you live a spiritual and love an existence and at the same time blame and judge others or be motivated out of revenge. Enlightenment demands that you take responsibility for your life. Responsibility means literally to respond with ability. Obviously, this is impossible when you are disabled by hatred, blame and revenge. Take a look at the lives of many who are most admired in history. 
Those who were fixed on revenge led us into war after war, killing indiscriminately, destroying everything in their path, all in the name of blame and anger. How can anyone make a positive contribution and tune in to the force of love when he is preoccupied with vengeance? Impossible. Listen to the words of those you admire and rather than put a label on yourself such as Christian, Jew, Muslim, Buddhist or whatever, instead make a commitment to being Christ-like, God-like, Buddha-like and Muhammad-like. We and all of the world will be much better off for that commitment and we will begin living forgiveness every day rather than only talking about it in church and then heading back to our daily lives to help build more weapons, sue our neighbours and judge those who are not in geographic proximity to us. Forgiveness. One of the most poignantly memorable covers of a national magazine appeared several years back. It was a picture of Pope John Paul II sitting in a dungeon with a man who attempted to assassinate himself. That portrait of forgiveness left a lasting impression on me. People whom we consider holy or spiritual or role models of decency always are able to forgive without qualification or doubt. They do not cloud their consciousness with thoughts of anger, hatred and revenge towards those who have, who have attempted to wrong or harm them. Rather, they provide us with a model of forgiveness that we can use in our daily lives. Perhaps the picture of Christ forgiving those who are in the process of torturing and killing him is the most powerful utterance of the spiritual master. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is the very essence of Christianity, and yet very few are able to live up to these words. It is important for, our, for each of us to consider the meaning of those words. They know not what they do. People who are inflicting harm on others really and truly do not know what they are doing to others. They are always acting out of their own anger, hatred, blame or revenge. What they direct to others says nothing about the others. However, it says something very powerful about them. This is what you must learn about forgiveness. Those people who have behaved towards you in any which way you find disagreeable or hurtful really and truly do not know what they have done to you. Why? You might reasonably ask. Because they are unable to see that we are all connected. They are living out of their separateness. They see themselves as separate from everyone else. They are like that cancer cell in the body that has no reference to the whole because they are composed of disharmony. They act out on their adjacent fellow humans in the same way that the cancer cells gobbles up the adjacent cell, ultimately killing the body and itself in the process. You would not blame a cancer cell for being a cancer cell, would you? Obviously, you would expect it to do precisely what it has to do, given its makeup. This is true of those who are behaving in ways which you dislike. They cannot know what they are doing to others because they feel no reference to others. They are sending out their disharmony towards you because that is what they have to give away. Hating themselves for their behaviour is akin to hating moss for growing on a tree and destroying the appearance of the tree. The moss only knows how to be moss, and regardless of your opinion about how it should not be behaving in such moss-like ways, it will still continue doing all that it knows how to do. Victimizers too are acting out on the basis of all that they know, and the only way you can help them to stop behaving in such ways is to help them to convert their disharmony into self-acceptance and self-love so that eventually that will be all they have to give away. This in no way implies that victimizers should not be held totally accountable for their actions, 
But it is you I am talking to here, not the abuser. Compassion for others is impossible when you are filled with a belief that you are separate and distinct from other human beings. Once you know, truly know in your heart, that you are connected to all others, even those who behave in evil ways, you then have reference to the entire being called human being. With this new awareness comes the ability to forgive as a guiding principle in life. They know that those who send out hatred are only acting out from where they are and how they have been thinking up until this moment. The enlightened person is sure enough of his own divineness that he does not judge himself in any negative manner because of the actions of others. Indeed, forgiveness is man's highest achievement because it shows true enlightenment in action. It illustrates that one is in harmony with the very stuff of the universe, that is, with the energy of love. It is the ability to give this love away in the most difficult of circumstances. Our role models remind us that the people who choose harm's way for others know not what they do. For it is as true as anything I know about human beings that we cannot give away what we do not have and we only give away what we do have. If we give away hatred or harm in any way, it is, it is because that is what we have. It is impossible for someone who has only love within to give away hatred. This is why your ability to forgive will come automatically when you truly become awakened. Mark Twain said it so beautifully when he wrote, Forgiveness is the fragrance of the violet sheds on the hill that has crushed it. A grand image indeed, and one to keep in mind as you work on this universal principle of forgiveness. Let's reread what Mark Twain said so beautifully when he wrote, Forgiveness is the fragrance of the violence of the vi the violent? <laughs> Forgiveness is the fragrance of the violet sheds on the hill that has crushed it. Okay. My own voyage of forgiveness. As I stood at my father's grave back in 1974, I was not aware of the changes and challenges that lay ahead of me, but I knew that I was participating in some very powerful drama. As I talked to my father with tears streaming down my face, I sensed something changed for me, and by the time I left Mississippi, I knew that I was a new man. I knew somehow, in some inexplicable way, I had been sent to that gravesite for a reason. Forgiveness, that is, correcting my misperceptions about why I was carrying around all of that hatred for so many years, freed me to do the things that were waiting for me. I created a life of excitement, abundance in every sense of the word, and love that I had previously known nothing about. I set about writing, speaking, making tapes and doing a great deal of media publicity over the years. I was making regular appearances on national television, speaking to large groups and earning more money than I had imagined for myself. Then one day I received something in the mail that was to put my newfound ecstasy to a real test. A registered letter arrived from an attorney informing me that I was going to be sued. Though I felt the lawsuit was without merit, I was in shock. No one had ever threatened me with a lawsuit and I did not even know an attorney. After thousands of dollars and almost two years spent in legal battles, I realised I had slipped back into old vengeful, vengeful ways. The anger that I felt filled me with rage that was destroying me. I was not eating properly. I lost a great deal of weight. I felt terrible all the time and still the anger mounted in me. I felt like the ultimate victim. Not one day would go by without me thinking angrily, why is this happening? Why won't it go away? Then one evening, after giving a speech to a large group of people and relating the story of how I had forgiven my father at his grave, and of all the mysterious happenings that had occurred in order 
for me to even to find his grave, a beautiful light exploded inside of me. It finally hit me that forgiveness is the key. Not hatred and anger, but forgiveness. In that moment, it was all over for me as far as that unjust lawsuit was concerned. That night, I had the first restful night's sleep in a long time. I thought about the people who were suing me and I sent them all forgiveness. The next morning, I completed my act of forgiveness totally. I was no longer going to participate in this absurdity. I let go of thoughts about any problems that might come my way. And instead, I focused all of my thinking on the people involved. My heart opened up to them and I stopped the angry thoughts. That morning, I sent them flowers and a selection of books to read. I notified my attorney that I was through paying legal bills for this thing and that he would simply stand by and not respond to anything else concerning this case. My thoughts, which previously were full of anger, were converted to love almost instantly. I knew in my heart that I, that I could handle any contingency that might arise. <clears throat> Sorry, let me just reread that. I knew in my heart that I could handle any contingency, need to get that word out, that might arise from this case and that it was all going to be fine. Three days later, I received a notice from the group spokesman, spokesperson that they were dropping the case and apologising for any problems they had caused. They had signed a release. It was all over. Well, while I had spent thousands of dollars and lived a nightmare for two years, I finally learned the lesson of forgiveness that I had been introduced to back in Biloxi. I had to recreate a miserable existence again in order to have the message really clear this time and all that I spent and all that I went through were all done for a powerful reason to teach me the lesson of love over hatred to get it firmly entrenched this time that the only response to hatred is love everything else will bring you down again I do not regret one penny that I spent on the experience the moment I switch from anger to love, to forgiveness, the moment I switch from anger to forgiveness, it was all over for me. I was free in that one single, in that one simple, swift instant, and the rest simply had to be played out in form. After that brush with the legal system had disappeared from my life, I made a pledge to myself that I would put forgiveness completely into practice. I contacted every single person in my life towards whom I had any hostile or even mildly annoyed feelings. I decided to clear them all out with forgiveness. I wanted to be absolutely certain that if I died in the next moment, not one single person on this planet would have any leftover amniosity towards me that I had not tried to rectify even though it was obvious to me that none of it could have possibly been my fault. Don't we all feel that way? There were several people who had borrowed money from me and obviously were not going to pay me back. I had not talked to them in years and the fact that they had not repaid the debts had damaged our relationships. I sent each of those people autographed copies of my books, some tapes that I had produced and some flowers with a note saying that I was wishing them well, sending them love and trusting that they were happy and joyful. I did not mention the debt. In my heart, I had let it go by by deciding that it was okay for them not to repay me. It was over and I had not only forgiven, but I had sent them expressions of love instead of annoyance and bitterness. In every other area of my life, I made an internal commitment to forgive regardless of how minor the events were. It only took a few hours, and it was all behind me. No enemies left at all. No one to direct any hatred towards on the entire planet. No family members to blame for anything that had taken place years and years earlier. No formal colleagues or bosses with whom I had disagreements. I was now on a forgiveness bandwagon, and it was working dramatically. My relationship to all of those people were clean. And I was not only sending love, 
but receiving it as well. Several of the debts came in, and though some have never been repaid, it is fine. I love them all, and now today as I write this book, I cannot think of a single person on this planet that I have any left over bad feelings with. Moreover, I now know that I truly have no one to forgive, and I never did. I simply had to correct my misperception that others were causing me to be miserable, that they were the cause of my discontent. Paradoxically, through the act of forgiveness, I have come to a place where forgiveness never comes up for me. I have learned to accept others exactly as they are and never pretend to love something I don't. But I also know I no longer need the immobilising emotional reactions that used to occupy my encounters with people who were behaving in ways which I disliked. Consequently, acceptance has allowed me to see things. Let's just repeat that, <laughs> correct me. Consequently, acceptance has allowed me to see them for what they are and where they are and to remind me of the same thing in myself. Any hostile or negative reaction in me as a result of the behaviour of others really just lets me know where I am or am not and no longer requires any forgiveness. I have come to a point of not needing to forgive by forgiving. One more paradox. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, that's like just over 45 minutes. The next part of this chapter on forgiveness, which we will complete in just one more reading. There's uh, not many pages left. Is uh, putting forgiveness into action. Okay, so until next time, take care. Much love. Bye for now.